it's, it's two way street. Um, if you employ leverage as part of your investment strategy, you are accepting a downside risk and wanting an upside gain. Um, it's part of the, you know, the ebbs and flows. So when you have a seismic event like the one we're just in the middle of or previous ones like the depegging of the Swiss franc in 2015 or the EU referendum 2016 or the financial crisis, which you referred to earlier over 10 years ago, um, there are going to be uh, pressure on executing brokers and bankers to shut positions uh, in line with their contractual obligations and rights. And that is what causes uh, these sorts of, uh, of, of cases. Andrew, since the financial crisis, we've seen a whole lot of changes to regulation, all of the disclaimers, all of the awareness uh, campaigns that go with taking out financial products. Effectively, you have to have a level of sophistication to take out some of the uh, financial products. Margin lending, I mean, this is one that is readily available to a lot of people, but we've also seen cases in the past where there was a Norwegian billionaire, Alexander Vick, who lost an $8 billion claim against Deutsche Bank, and that related to the liquidation of some of his portfolio. What does this tell us about how much uh, investors are on the hook for those losses and that there really isn't naturally a recourse to get some of that money back? Well, there is a recourse through the courts. There is. I mean, what happens is that, you know, when leverage is provided, um, by a bank or a broker, it's it's provided under the ambit of um, a, a, a management agreement, a, a contractual framework, which is explicit and implicit, but explicit in, um, in, in what the obligations and rights of both parties are, and that includes uh, forced liquidations. Uh, it's quite right that the um, that the broker or banker should should know have some degree of certainty on on, on the conditions that are, that are that will prevail uh, to allow them to to shut um, to shut these positions to, for their own for their own protection. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, I think some of these. Uh, cases going through aren't relating to whether the executing broker or banker has the right to to close the positions. It's more a question of what, what the scope of that duty is and the manner in which that duty is used. I mean, for instance, the scope of the duty, you know, is it acceptable for whilst liquidating positions for the, the bank or the broker to, to use uh, reasonable care and skills, which is a phrase taken out of consumer regulation, or is it uh, perhaps proper or acceptable to, to close, out, uh, close out positions uh, just using best endeavours, uh, absent bad faith and to be rational? Um, that is, you know, a very low bar. Um, secondly, I mean, most of these disputes really relate to the manner in which the duty, uh, the duty w was was imposed or was used, rather. Um, I mean, it, it, the timing of the liquidations um, and such like, and the manner of the, of the of the liquidations. That's what really causes the loss, and that is what uh, claimants are taking exception to. Andrew, uh, it, it seems to me that um, for any case to have any merit, there has to be clear evidence of wrongdoing and a, a misunderstanding of how to impose the terms of the contract. I, I'm just astounded that we've seen this movie before, 10 years ago. We, we've rolled on 10 years and we don't seem to have learnt the lesson. I mean, could you just uh, expand on that and perhaps explain why banks or financial institutions may not have learnt from the experience of the global financial crisis. And while, and while we, we talk about the banks, what about those large investors that are investing on leverage? Why would they not have experienced uh, the, uh, the sell-off of 2008 and adjusted their expectations accordingly? Well, actually, good morning, Jeff. Actually, it's more than that. I mean, I'm still litigating in terms, uh, in relation to LIBOR, the LIBOR scandal, and uh, and even um, the depegging of the Swiss franc. These things run and run and run, uh, and uh, you know, it's not surprising. But I, I think that the investors uh, have uh, learned a bit of a lesson from the sort of mandate cases, you know, forced liquidation cases that have gone through the courts or have uh, are being pursued through the courts. Uh, essentially. The contracts are the bank, the banks and brokers are it's usually their terms and conditions which are contracted with. And the courts are, are likely to, uh, to to uphold those terms and conditions. And I think that the pri large private investors and the more sophisticated investors are aware of that now. 
that, that there are very few cases that I know of going through the courts where the per, where, where the individual rather than the closing out party has prevailed. So I think the lessons have been learned. Uh, question, but I think we're talking about a cyclical view of history here, where the human condition does the same thing over and over again. And I don't think that people are uh, sorry. I think that people erase their memories quite quickly, despite the fact that these seismic events seem to come round with metronomic regularity. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.